pretty much running out of light right now. It's blue hour and I wanted to just make this video really for anyone that is like me. Went through a similar situation where I I didn't, I there was all this information online about like how to do photo and video, but I couldn't like figure out what necessarily was the appropriate thing and I didn't have the budget to be able to go out and you know spend hundreds and or thousands of dollars on a course. Um, so I'm making this video so that, you know, I just speaking to my past self, if I were to start over with photo and video in 2023, what would be the things that I would focus on? So the first one that I would focus on would really just be to, it's kind of based around like what Alex Hermosi talks about. And I know it's kind of counterintuitive to what I, or, you know, what I actually just said, but it's paying off ignorance debt. So if you have the money that in, it doesn't have to be like, you know, thousands of dollars, but if you have the money, invest in some sort of photography course or video course to where you can learn those skills quickly. Um, and that that's it. Now, if you don't have that option, what you could do is find a creator that you know and trust or, or a creator that you trust at least and that, and then just watch them specifically um, and, and just really focus on that. Because what happens is whenever you start looking at all these different creators, you end up like, it's almost like information overload. At least it was for me, um, trying to piece together all the things that are most important. So once like the, that, that would be like the education is the most important part. Before you go out and purchase anything, like go, just make sure this is something that you're actually gonna be into. Like look at the lifestyle and everything like that. Um, and then once you have that done, the next part and everybody's like, oh yeah, you, you just need to go out and buy this expensive camera. Or some people are like, you don't need a camera at all. It's really your choice. It's whatever your budget is. You, you can buy a camera if you wanna buy a camera or you can just use your phone. But I would say, depending on whichever one you decide to do, go out and take a photo every single day for the next 30 days, if not 60 days. And this isn't something that I would do to like go out of my way. Like don't just intentionally come to a location when you're first getting started just to make yourself actually take photographs. This could be a photograph while you're doing, just have your camera with you while you're doing whatever you're doing throughout the day. And what this would do would help train me to be able to understand like composition and also focus on intentionality on what I'm taking a photograph of. That's what I would do because it would, it was because once I actually am out taking a photograph for like a, a paid gig, I wanna know that like what I'm taking a photograph is something that actually tells a story. And so getting in that habit of doing that gets you more familiar with your camera as well as that habit of understanding storytelling because there's so many times where I've taken photographs and there was like no actual subject. It was just a bunch of trees and like if I showed it to somebody, they'd be like, what am I looking at here? Whereas like if I took a picture of like a big mountain range, that would make a little bit more sense. Um, but the education and then getting familiar with your equipment. And once you're familiar with your equipment, now you could start to build your portfolio, which is what you have to have in order to be able to be successful in this industry anyways, at least in my experience, um, is you have to build a portfolio because your sport portfolio is evidence of the work that you are able to provide or the service you're able to provide. And it can be hard to, to build a portfolio for if you haven't ever built anything like that before because some folks don't you know, want to work for free. Um, but I say, think that you can get so much value from working for free because you are working for free, but in, it, but in reality, you're actually not because you're getting content for your portfolio. And once you become, you know, really familiar with your camera and you actually start building that portfolio, then you can start getting paid clients and start really making some money and starting to understand that the way this business works is that you invest a little bit of money into your equipment, you gain these skills, then you can start getting higher paying clients and then you can start investing that money back into your gear and ultimately creating a business out of what you do if that's just, that's that if that's what you want to do if you want to do something just like a YouTube filmmaking style um, you don't necessarily have to go down that road but you, if you want it to like get start getting experience you got to build a portfolio if I was going to build a portfolio today first thing I would do is reach out to all my contacts in my phone and I would just in Alex Ramosi talks about this I didn't come up with this on my own it's a, it's a genius idea is just like reach out to everyone that you know and ask them if they are in, in need of or if they know anyone in need of photo or video services um, but don't just like pop in I th this is what Alex talks about it's like don't just pop in and be like hey you want to buy something but like, hey how you been like be a human follow up with them and stuff and create a conversation because I've, I've done free video, 
or I'm sorry, I've done free photo shoots and done things for free, like just going out and walking around town and local businesses um, and just doing them for free. But now I have them to use for my social media and I also have them to build my portfolio. So those are all ways like, cause that's the, the thing is like, how do I build the portfolio once I have the gear? Um, and you wanna make sure that you are putting quality work into your portfolio because in, Another thing that I didn't, I, I almost almost slipped my mind, but I would also study, you know, what the, the standard is in the industry um, and just like scan the market, like look at, we we'll call them competitors, but look at some of the photographers in your local area and see what their skill set is. Because if you are not, um, if you're not at that skill level yet, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to charge at that rate um, because the way that people are going to perceive you. Now, I'm not saying that you're not worth what you're charging. What I'm saying is, is like the perception of what value you're going to offer. Um, but that was, that, that would just be what I would want to do to get started. I don't want to make this like too much because once you have your portfolio done, it's kind of like rinse and repeat. Um, there is a portion of there, like how much should you charge for your services? Um, but that's really just depending on the amount of value. I, I will recommend a good book. Um, $100 million offers by Alex Ramosi was a really good book that I read. And it, you know, it's just kind of changed my mindset on like how to formulate an offer. So it's a win win for yourself and the client. Um, and then he also has a follow on book for like $100 million leads. And I'm not like, this is, he's not, nobody's paying me to say anything. I'm just saying these are good books that I read that really helped with the business side of things. That's it. Hope you got some value out of this content. One thing, a video I uploaded, was it was like two days ago or something like that. The last video I uploaded, I said something about like rules are meant to be broken. You can crank your shutter, filmmaking and stuff like that. If you are wanting to, you're wanting to stick to like the industry, like the rules. I talked about the rules and they're, they're meant to be broken. If you break the 180 rule, just know that there will be some trade-offs just like anything. Like you may not, it may not be perfect resolution. So if it goes up, on a big screen or something like that and it doesn't look the way that it looked on your LCD screen or like it looks on YouTube, then you, then you might want to reconsider whether or not like breaking the rules is, is, a, is it's the, the right option. But if you're just like doing run and gun type stuff, like you're posting videos on YouTube or doing some run and gun filmmaking for like uh, different clients and stuff, you obviously want to make sure it's at the highest resolution possible. But rules are meant to be broken. so. Play around with it and see what you know works for you. But that's it. All right, I'm not going to say anything more. I hope this was helpful, and I hope that this would help my past self. We'll see what happens whenever I get to editing this video. But thank you so much for sticking around if you're still here, and I'll see you in the next video.